Our uh, next uh, book sits on the New York Times bestseller list currently, but it's not a typical book and it's certainly not a typical story. The book is called The Opposite of Loneliness, and it was written by Marina Keegan. Marina Keegan died almost two years ago, five days after graduating from Yale University. Her latest and last essay called The Opposite of Loneliness was published uh, just a short time after she died, and it went worldwide. It went viral, and in that short span, she was dubbed the voice of her generation. The Opposite of Loneliness touched so many people so many different ways after she had passed. They turned it into a book and took a compilation of her essays and stories and turned it into a book that now sits in the New York Times bestseller list. The book is called The Opposite of Loneliness, and the parents of Marina Keegan, uh, Tracy and Kevin Keegan, join us by phone. Tracy and Kevin, thanks for joining us here in St. Louis on the Big 550 KTRS. Thanks for having us, McGraw. Yes, thank you. When did the idea of a book like this come to you? Was it how long did it take, and was it your idea, or did somebody come to you with the idea? No, it was definitely our idea, and it wasn't too long, uh, you know, after the tragedy that uh, you know we decided that uh, we wanted to do it. You know, it was actually at the service that uh, you know that Tracy, uh, you know, included a lot of her writing, you know, in the actual service itself. Uh, and Trace, do you want to? Well, I feel that it was um, actually the overwhelming response of all of the people from across the world who so kindly reached out to us and expressed how moved and actually inspired they were by reading The Opposite of Loneliness. That, as difficult as it might have been, it made sense that the best gift we could give to others and also to honor our daughter would be to put together a collection of her work and to try and share it with even more people and hopefully, you know, bring a little light into their lives as well. Yeah. Um, We should say that in getting ready for this interview and and reading in the book and reading some of the things you guys have said, um, she would want you to read this book because it's good, not because she's dead. Absolutely. Yeah, talk about that for a moment. But she'd get offended if you only read the book because she was dead. <laughs> <laughs> she, she worked very, very hard uh, at her skills and tried to hone her skills as a professional writer, which she had kind of embraced as, uh, you know, as, uh, you know her, her bliss, so to speak, what she really felt was her calling in life. She also was able to realize, I think, she was starting to realize, actually, from having written her first um, piece of journalism that kind of garnered some public attention called Even Artichokes of Doubts, uh, which is actually in the collection of the stories where she kind of challenged uh, her fellow classmates' um, choices, you know, and whether or not they were really very conscious about going into, say, finance or consulting, um, when they were graduating rather than some of the passions that they had brought with them to school in the first place. Right. So she had some success, you know, before this happened. I mean, she had written for, you know, the New York Times. She had uh, been published in the New Yorker, uh, dot com, and she, you know, was, uh, you know, she was well on her way. She was headed to New York to take a job with the New Yorker. You don't get that by accident. Right. Yeah. She had, uh, you know, done a internship with them, uh, you know, the previous summer, and she had uh, been going to the Paris Review, you know, every Thursday, taking a train an hour and a half down, uh, you know, to do some work with them as well. So Yeah. The opposite of loneliness has been called sort of a, a manifesto for millennials, but what I find interesting is I'm 47 years old, and it relates to me, <laughs> and it relates to people of all ages. It does, actually. Right. Yeah, we heard from people of all ages who, uh, you know, have that, you know, common struggle, you know, that are looking for direction, you know, a sense of belonging. Uh, and it's really that, you know, it's never too late to change message that, uh, you know, that's in there. And uh, people have told us that they've, you know, 
you know, change their minds, like she says, you know, have tried something new that they've been wanting to do for, for their entire lives. Yeah. People have, you know, left uh, jobs to go work for nonprofits or started writing. And all of these, you know, letters that we've received and emails have, uh, you know, have really been uh, uplifting for us. The book is called The Opposite of Loneliness, written by Marina Keegan. It's on the New York Times bestseller list. She died two years ago. Her parents, Tracy and Kevin Keegan, join us now. Tracy and Kevin, how much of her work did you read before the accident, and and how much did you discover of her work after she had passed away? Want me to take that one, Kevin? Well, I would say that we've, uh, you know, I had seen maybe half of it, and Tracy maybe a little bit more, but uh, there there was some uh, certainly that we, you know, had discovered that she had written it, uh, you know, in some classes at Yale in her last year, and uh, Trace? Well, she was just really just a couple of months before she died. She had come down to our home on the Cape over her vacation. She was badly trying to, you know, work on the, her final English um, concentration project, which was, uh, and actually three of those stories are in the book. Um, so she was writing three fiction pieces. She was also finishing a, uh, or reworking um, a musical that she had written called Independence, which was going up at the <coughs> Fringe Playwriting Festival in Manhattan. Subsequently, I think it was named a, a New York Times Critics Pick, which was great. Uh, so she was really working hard to kind of, you know, finish a lot of these things. And so we hadn't even had a chance to read the final product of this work that she was sort of in the middle of because I mean, she died five days after she graduated, you know, so there wasn't, we didn't even get to see it. One thing that I found out after she had died is that um, she had actually been asked to collaborate on an NPR piece for This American Life with um, writer-producer Jack Hitt. And I know that she was a huge fan of This American Life, and that was, um, it was very nice to learn that she had, had, had known that she had worked hard enough that, they, that uh, Jack had asked if he, she would collaborate with him. It's it, some of the stories. I, I mean, it, what's what's and I'm no uh, writer critic, and I'm not a very good reader. I, but it's 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 really really good. And what I find is how honest it is and how real it is. And I mean, she takes issues dead on. And I, it's one thing for a parent to hear about a child, ha- um, you know, using drugs or something else. But it's something when you read a story that your child writes about the character having, you know, using drugs or sex or whatever. I, what, what were your thoughts as you were reading some of these stories, which were so real, coming from your daughter? Mm-hmm. Well, I feel that, you know, no matter how old you are in life, your perception informs your reality. Mm-hmm. And I think that Marina was... The thing that I think is really amazing about her is that she was so courageous. She had a lot of courage because she was willing to bear herself honestly to her readers and to voice her own personal concerns or jealousies or insecurities. And I think in some ways that's, that's part of why people can identify with her because she was willing to say, well, here I am. You know, come on and join me if you want. But I think she also had great hope and belief in the hu- in humanity. Right. And so, you know, they knew they weren't alone. You know, when she's, you know, brave enough to bear herself publicly, uh, you know, they would, uh, they'd know that, uh, you know, they weren't, uh, you know, sure if, you know, they had made it, uh, you know, you know, that they weren't alone. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming working on the book, the opposite of loneliness, did it help with the grief? Did it did it sort of bring you? I mean, it kept her alive, I guess, in a sense for you. You know, yes and no. You know, it's a roller coaster of emotions when something like this happens to a, a parent. And uh, you know, a lot of times it felt like it was uh, you know a daily memorial service. You know, but other days, you know, there were. Uh, you know, happy times, you know, when we'd see her friends particularly, 
those were uh, those were much better days. And uh, you know, we've had some some real highs when you know we do a reading like we did last week. Uh, you know, at the Yale Club in New York, and you know, we found out you know it was on the New York Times bestseller list, and you know, we uh, you know we felt very proud that day. Yeah, the book is called The Opposite of Loneliness. Marina Keegan is the author, and it was compiled by uh, stories and essays compiled by uh, her parents, Tracy and Kevin, who join us now. There, there's there's a there's a um, I don't want to call it haunting, but I guess that's the the right word. When you read The Opposite of Loneliness and you know the story, it's powerful in its own right, but it's almost haunting when you know what happened to her. And it's almost like she had a premonition that she only had so many days on this earth and she had to get everything out. I agree. Yeah, and not only in The Opposite of Loneliness, uh, you know, essay, but, you know, throughout. You know, she uh, you know, she re- writes about death in, in so many of her different uh, stories. It's... Uh, you know, it is eerie. Uh, and in her play, uh, Utility Monster, you know, she talks, uh, one of her characters, about, you know, wanting to get, you know, her, her novel done be- before she dies of cancer, which she's suffering with. I mean, so, you know, she definitely wanted to leave something behind, uh, make her mark. Uh, you know, she, you know, she writes about, uh, <laughs> you know, being able to talk from the dead. Uh, and so... You know, it, uh, it's definitely... Uh, if you'd like, I w- um, to support your your intuition about th- the way that she sort of, this sort of feeling she had, I can share um, a sentence or two that she actually wrote in her journal. Please do, yes. And I was thinking about this the other day. Um, she wrote, Ambition, I must always remember, is a choice. Often it is noble and can help. I crave a simple life but I also want to have an impact to do something meaningful and important. I hate that I feel I am running out of time. I must always remember that time is all there is, and we are always running out of it. How old was she when she wrote that? 20. Yeah. Haunting. She actually was on a fellowship to India to study the rise of humanism in India. And when she was there, I will tell you this about Marina, which I think is something that um, I have I have learned a lot about how to live my life from the way in which she lived hers. And one of the things that I I don't think I really understood the depth of her mindfulness. She was huge, hugely mindful. She was very much conscious of being conscious of the choices she was making, of how she was interacting, and of really thinking out what can I do that will help people the most. She actually wrote, why am I so, um, why am I so worried about the fate of humanity? Why am I not paying more attention to my friends and family? You know, I might have agreed with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, actually, I actually think that that's, you know, she actually is giving herself advice in her own journal. She's saying things like, You know, I need to work on being, you know, more openly empathetic. I need to work on my own listening. I need to strive for humility. I need to, and so she's really doing things which I've tried to embrace now myself, which is to really think about who and and what I want to be and how I want to interact with everyone on the planet. But but this is a uh, young woman who was, was really funny as well. I mean, so... You know, you know, I don't want to paint the picture of oh, yeah, a no, writer, writer who, you know, who's like, you know, talking about world problems and, uh, you know, giving, you know, advice, you know, because this is not a self-help book. It's very entertaining. And uh, because, you know, she, you know, can make you, as Ann Fadiman said, uh, you know, make you snort with laughter and then turn on a dime and break your heart. I mean, so, you know, I think that, uh, you know, people you know, uh, have told us that they can't put it down because, you know, the characters are very engaging. And, uh, you know, there's, you know, you know, some very funny stories in here as well. And, you know, even the stories that, you know, have a message, you know, or, you know, are talking about a very complicated love, they're very funny as well. Yeah. Oh, well, I, in, the, in, in her essay, The Opposite of Loneliness, uh, there are many great lines, but the one yeah. where she says, 
Uh, to those of you who are going on to make millions, uh, congrats and uh, and you suck. I mean, that's right. a exactly. <laughs> that's as that's as good as it gets right there because yeah, that I mean, speaks in, for a whole generation right there. Yeah, I mean, in you know, in all the stories, I mean, it's, I mean, because she was, uh, you know, she was a very very funny. Yeah, she was uh, hilarious. Funny girl. I mean, she was she was a lot of fun to be with and. No, Kevin, uh, you make a good point. Know. It's hard. That's the, you know, when, when someone's, you know, dead, you know, you do. You know, it's like she'd probably say, hey, don't forget, I was really funny. I was really engaged. I was, you know, off running yeah. around having fun with everybody. Oh, yeah. I, I remember a time when, you know, we were at one of her plays, uh, and people were coming up to the, the characters, you know, afterwards, and they were saying, oh, you were so good. You were so funny. And she was standing next to me steaming going, they're not funny. I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> My right. words are funny. Yeah. <laughs> the book is called The Opposite of Loneliness by Marina Keegan. It's a New York Times bestseller. Her parents are here with us to talk about the book. Last question for you, for you two, and I thank you for, for uh, spending a couple minutes with us. Um, the, it must have been very difficult to, one, pick the stories, but two, they were probably in varying degrees of being finished. So how much did you want to finish them? How much did you want to change them? How much did you want to, you know, put the new stuff with, with the old stuff? It must have been a very difficult decision-making process, I guess. Well, I'll start by saying that we didn't finish any stories or, you know, do any of the writing. Um, and then I'll let Tracy, uh, you know, finish the question. Luckily, um, everything that you read in this book <clears throat> was actually a completed work, although Marina would probably be the first to say, but there can always be a better thing. <laughs> you know, she could always make it better. And so I think what we were able to do is to really try to respect her voice, which was very important to me, um, that it sounded like Marina. Um, but with, we had absolutely uh, amazing support and help from two of her mentors, one is her um, English teacher, one of her English teachers at Yale, Anne Fadiman, who kindly wrote the introduction for the book, and who was very, very helpful going through and just kind of cleaning up um, some of the grammar that we felt maybe she didn't have it on purpose in a particular structure. Um, but, you know, and basically just, you know, kind of, you know, polishing the boots before they went out in public. But actually all the words and all the stories in this in this piece are com were completed when she when she had died yeah it's a it's a book in which is great for literary minds but i quite frankly think it just should be given to every kid who hates to read because i think she speaks to them more than anybody else yeah, and thank I, you i think it's also a great book for uh, for graduates yeah uh, for, you, know, for you know for graduation right yeah. we we found that a lot of people have reached out to us and Kids, you know, who are graduating from high school or graduating from college have actually said, oh, my gosh, I'm so happy to have read this and know somebody else thinks this way. And I think Marina gives people permission to, re you know, reevaluate their journey and go on another one, and it's perfectly okay. Yeah. Um, and to realize that their single voice and their single act can make a difference. Uh, cold Pastoral, I, wrote, I read that last night. That is a great story. <laughs> Thank you. That is just a great. There's just there's only words to say. It's just a great story, and it's it, it's the first one in the book. The book is called The Opposite of Loneliness. It sits on the New York Times bestseller list. Marina Keegan is the author. Tracy and Kevin Keegan, thank you very much for your time. And uh, thank you for putting the work. It's going to be uh, read by lots of people, and it's going to change a lot of lives. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank very you so much. much, McGraw. You got it. 929 here on the Big 550 KTRS. Let me read for you a blurb from the back of the book. In her brief life, Marina Keegan managed to achieve a precocious literary mastery. Her wry, her wry, wise, lyrical voice is unforgettable, and her vital, exuberant spirit reminds us powerfully to seize the day. Though through every sentence throbs with what might have been, this remarkable collection is ultimately joyful and inspiring because it represents the wonder of who she was. That blurb, written by my cousin, J.R. Moringer, who wrote the book, The Tender Bar. It's 929 here on the Big 550 KTRI.